Tonight we gather to celebrate the life of Lois Ekstrand. One of the quotes that I heard about Lois stated that she had a great sense of humor and that she loved corny jokes. Hence, you have got your corny jokes for the evening. We will be asking you to share them as the evening unfolds. So when you signed in tonight, you should have got your joke and a paper with a summary of Lois's life. As we celebrate Lois this evening, I see two sides of her personality beginning to emerge. The charming, outgoing personality, Miss Personality, if you will, of this classy lady whose flair endeared her to many whom she included in her circles of friends. She did not just have one circle, she had many circles of friends. Lois was a people person, and yet she was also a very, very private person who steadfastly believed that birthdays should be celebrated twice, hence our decorations and refreshments this evening. And I do ask that you wait until the meeting tonight officially is over before we have the cake. This is Lois's favorite cake, carrot cake, done up in a sheet cake form. And look at the decoration on it when you get up to the cake. Lois was also a very precise and detail-oriented person whose love for accuracy and detail could be seen in her Chicago home where she left the style of the 1920 apartment as is throughout her life. The furniture, the carpets, the accents were always in the same place. She did not move things around like many of us do today. Lois was very careful with the use of time when presenting the architectural words, for example. She had all of the information on three by five cards and she rehearsed them <coughs> repeatedly before the presentation so she did not overstep the time limit that was allotted. Lois's love for music and art and history and community will be remembered for many, many years. Her shrewd investments caught the Community Foundation by surprise as they did not know of her plans until after they received word of her passing, which was a year after she actually passed. Tonight we will share memories, share some laughter, perhaps even shed a few tears as we celebrate the life of Lois Ekstrand as Lois would have celebrated. So tonight we are celebrating her second birthday in one year. Now you will please join me in singing happy birthday to Lois, who joins us here in spirit. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lois. Happy birthday to you. And now I'm turning the meeting over to Roger. Anyway, I'm just going to backtrack a moment, and it's, it, it, it's kind of basically Lois and her White Lake world. It's kind of what we're going to talk about, what I'm going to talk about. We all kind of remember when we met Lois. I met her when I, way back in the 1950s when I was working at Skipper's Landing, uh, living there with Harry and Stella Pillinger with their summer crew. Great experience. Uh, Lois came by because her family had a sailboat they stored there called the Vagabond. Uh, Skipper's Landing was next to uh, the White Lake Yacht Club and um, was a great, Pillinger was an old PT boat skipper and very outspoken and, and, and Stella was a sweetheart and uh, anyway, just good stories. Um, okay, so it was next to the White Lake Yacht Club. Lois went to the White Lake Yacht Club sailing school. Uh, Tom Getz was her sailing instructor. She later sailed and raced an e-boat with the McKee girls. The McKee girls were neighbors. Um, uh, lots of time goes by. I ended up living out in California about 30 years. But when I came back, you would always kind of meet Lois during the summer and catch up on something while I was briefly in Montague. Um, after moving back here in 1990, I purchased a Hobie Cat sailboat from John and Sherry Calkins. Um, Lois said, why don't you keep it down at the beach by the boathouse? And I thought, that's a good idea. And so I, I did that, and then somehow that, that followed up with kayaks, sailing times. Lois would either jump on the Hobie Cat, would go out and you know, try not to capsize, and, and, and things like that. And um, 
Anyway, uh, she lived at basically 5795 Old Channel Trail. Um, so let, let's now kind of talk about Lois's world. Um, it's, it's kind of a three generations actually, her parents and then uh, the grandparents, they all love White Lake and the time spent at White Lake. Um, the family name was Hagelin, then later turned to Extran. Uh, we'll go into some photos of Lois's White Lake world. Before I do that, I just want to thank a few people. John and Sherry Calkins, Sherry wrote up this wonderful handout on Lois. And then um, Jerry Grady, who helped with a lot of photographs, Tom and Cheryl Lohman, and also specifically like Greg Johnson, who's the miracle man when it comes to electronic world and doing things like that. So um, we can start the photographs now uh, and we'll see what happens, said Roger Dum Dum. Uh, that's kind of awkward. Okay, so wh where, where, was, uh, where was Lois's place? You know, you never knew where it was. And, uh, but the, the key was sort of like, it was next to this entrance. This is the timbers. Yep. And so it has a very grand area going in, curving drive that goes back to the timbers, the old Sturdivant house. Okay, so um, where's the entrance to Lois's place? <laughs> this is the entrance. <laughs> And the other clue is that across the street, she always put up during the summer, there was a yellow mailbox. So when you saw the mailbox, get ready to turn left. <laughs> anyway, Winnemac had a, uh, a long driveway and it takes off and goes way back in. And it's a long, long driveway. Lois told the story that her grandparents were going down there to buy the house during the 1920s and um, they started going through the woods and going through the woods. It's about a half mile, quarter of a mile long driveway, two track road, you know, nothing pretentious. And um, anyway, she said her grandmother said, I don't know what's back here, but let's buy it when we get there. <laughs> and, and, and she just loved driving through the woods. So anyway, this is the house. Um, wonderful old place and, and um, after the 1893 World's Fair and, and the Columbian Exposition in Chicago, everything had to have columns, and so the porch has a wraparound porch, column kind of thing, and screen porch, sign on the right was called the breakfast porch, and uh, the deer always ate the yew hedges in front. And uh, anyway, wonderful spot. And then this was a current picture I took. There was the main house, to the left is the, is the pump house. It now has an option of city water. They ran a, a water line through there. And then this was the barn. And basically this ended up being the boat barn because that's where the boats were stored during the winter. Then this was the wonderful view from the screen porch. I mean, in today's world, they'd chop down all the trees so you wouldn't have any foreground. You'd just look out over the lake. Whereas this somehow you're on the screen porch there's a bench on the bluff kind of thing. And then over to the right is the lift that goes down to the boathouse. And then this is the boathouse down below. You can see where the high water used to be. And they had to put in a, a seawall around the boathouse to save it once. Beyond the left, beyond the boathouse on the left is the lift that was put in for her grandparents and then was used by her parents and then was used by Lois. So slowly the lift and then the house is up on the right hand side. And then these were the, I love the bird out there. Um, Lois had a wonderful fiberglass howl boat, wooden decking kind of thing, and then also had the sailboat, Flying Scott. And um, they used to be kept out on, on, on anchors and buoys, but now they're on lifts. Anyway, more in Winnemac Lodge, 100 years. She had a celebration for 100 years. Um, 100 summers, 1903 to 2003. And this was like September 14th when she had a, a little opening to celebrate the, the, the place. And then Ruth Pitkin got along very well with Lois because they both had trained 
decorative eyes kind of thing. And um, so this was a, a thing that Ruth had fixed up for Lois. And it's basically Winnemac Lodge has enjoyed 100 White Lake summers. So did the White Lake Yacht Club, 1003. Crayola was invest in, in started in 100 years. There's a Ford thing up on the left. And I couldn't figure out what the thing up on the right hand side. What? Harley Davidson. Harley Oh, okay, motorcycles, okay. Yes. Wow, okay. 100 years old. Anyway, this is a graduation picture of Lois. And then mother and dad, Hagelin and Ekstrand. Hagelin is a name that's been around for a while here in, in the White Lake area. Uh, the house that Nancy Fleming was raised in was built by Hagelin. The house across the street on Old Channel Trail was built by Hagelin. Hagelin also built a house on the old Pack Estate, now Oxy Lodge. Anyway, there's um, Hagelin and Ekstrand. And then, Lo Lo there's a Swedish background, and so Lois loved being out on the water. And uh, <clears throat> again and again and again, just get out there on the water. So enjoying sailing, enjoying sailing, mother and daughter. She had those wonderful blue chairs down on the boathouse deck. You'd sit there and rock and uh, kind of watch the stuff where the world go by. Here's the three generations. There's uh, Mrs. Hagelin, Lois, and then her mother. Hagelin becomes Ekstrand. <laughs> and then she, she loved birthdays, and you'll see that when we get to the birthday cake and back there. Um, happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. And there's and this is a wonderful write-up that Sherry Calkins did, which is part of the pass out here, which includes that birthday. And then she was very much involved with photography. And you'll read that in, in the handout. Um, and so she's always taking pictures. And then um, there's always something, something going on. Not, you know, summer's never going to end. So we always had the end of the summer beach party down at Lloyd's Landing. And you can kind of see the crew. Lois is in the center there in the white. And, uh, Mary Lee's over in the right, different people, etc. But somehow we had to admit that summer was over. And then maybe after the Lloyd's Landing thing, you'd end up at, at um, Old Channel Inn for dinner. It's her friend Ruth from from, Miske from, from Chicago Land. And then uh, being out on the water. Lois loved being out on the water. This is her old powerboat. And then this is a pontoon boat she used later on. But obviously, uh, you know, there's, there's a joke going around the, the deck kind of thing. Ruth Gleason is laughing. So fall boating goes on. Here we are in the power boat um, going by the lighthouse. Lois at the wheel. And then <laughs> Lois at the wheel. This is on a pontoon boat she later on leased. Um, so on the pontoon boat, and you can she she never wanted to close up, all right. And uh, I, I was hope, hoping Bruce Carroll was going to come because he was the guy that put in the dock and took out the dock, and um, and somehow you had to take the dock out before the ice froze, and uh, and uh, and it was obviously. But anyway, fall boating. You can sort of see where we are in the background there, down by Ravenswood. You know, getting colder. And then longtime friends on the left is, uh, Lois had a wonderful relationship with the Cullen family. And so this is Donna Cullen Benedict, Lois, Ruth Pitkin, and then Ruth Gleason down at the lighthouse. And uh, when Lois was a kid, uh, she played with Nina Roberts, who became a Cullen. And then, um, and then Nina's brother, Ed, was a photographer, which also clicked because Lois loved photography. And, uh, 
and they, they would somehow play around with kids and, and, and as time goes on. Anyway, just longtime friends and Ruth Pitkin had wonderful, you know, educated design eyes and, uh, and so did Lois and so they ended up putting together, you know, the awards and if you look over there by the church wall, there's all the plaque signs that Lois did for the architectural awards for the Historical Society. Endless, endless. Okay, there, there's Ruth and Lois again, and Norm Alman in the background. Luth, Luth or, um, Ann over on the left. But anyway, The architectural historical well, architectural awards, um, as I mentioned, were all lined up over there. We gave out plaques, and so um, Lois and Ruth would get together, and then uh, decide, you know, maybe what what should be available. And, uh, the Historic Preservation Awards Committee was headed up by Lois, Ruth Pitkin, Ellie Dennis. Cal and Jane Lane, myself and Cassie Ellis. I don't think I left out anybody's name, but that's about it. But anyway, uh, they would go around town and see you know, who had improved a building, uh, who was trying to bring a building back. And you can see all those lined up on, on the plaque walls over there by the church wall. So 2009, uh, Dog and Suds, different things, you know. <clears throat> the Frank Lloyd Wright House, Bridgebrook, in the center, the old Ornberger House, Dog and Suds. <coughs> um, Montague Houses, Whitehall Houses. Same thing here. Wonderful red brick house in the North Hill in Montague. And then, uh, then there was a couple in town, Bud and Aileen Fritch, and they were summer people but became permanent people. And the uh, <clears throat> second house down on, on the left, the old ferry house there on the ferry memorial land. And anyway, they, they uh, renovated house after house after house and uh, did wonderful brown shingle projects. And so we gave them an architectural award, Bud and Aileen. Once again, Bud and Aileen Fritch uh, giving them an award. And then big and small, there's the, the little house down here, the White House on the right, is the Wabaningo Post Office. I mean, that virtually was a house that was on wheels. It was like up on the bluff, it was down on the dock, moved alongside the Wab Club, etc. And then on the left over here, wonderful red brick house that Pat and Ben Scholl had out on uh, Eilers Road. The other things like Lois tying into local things was that like she would open up on the end of April and the end of April was Shoal's Plow Day. And so there was always a reason to sort of open up Shoal Plow Day. And then uh, she would end up basically the week before deer hunting season started. That's when she would close and uh, take care of the, close up the property. <coughs> yes. Plow Day is something you wish we still had. It was like yeah. Ben and Pat Scholl had Plow Day, and it was like always on the last Saturday or weekend in April. And what it was, it involved all the different teams of horses that would come through, and they would plow the field out there at Ben and Pat's for planting. But it was a wonderful display of horse horsepower, and uh, and they stopped it, and uh, Pat and Ben stopped it, and they were just sort of... Uh, Kind of things just kind of burn out. It's like, you know, we had Celebrate White Lake. I look at John and say, we did that for 26 years, you know, and then somehow the workers just kind of fade away. And so we haven't had uh, the old wooden boat show uh, after 26 years. I want to say that the plow days involved uh, competitions also yeah. for what, what, what guy with a team of Belgians and, uh, Wow, the straightest furrow. Mm. And, and what was the best dressed? 
He also <laughs> raced them. Pardon me? They would race the teams as well. And they, they, they do that too. Yeah, but I think that the I think the real thing was so to get Ben's fields plowed. <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, they certainly did that, yeah. It's a wonderful display of old, old horsepower and things like that. And uh, I don't know, it, it, maybe it could be revived, I don't know. Uh, okay, more Lois Awards. Wonderful red barn out there on Mill Pond Road, top left and right. Those wonderful houses down at Winnebago on the beach. Um, big houses, small houses. Whitehall Bank. Minehart building, which was moved down. Chamber building. All caught Ruth and Lois's eyes and deserved an award. Uh, the Lewis House, which changed over time. Um, our old house on 8495. Lois never gave herself an award, which she could have done, but somehow we were very protective towards her and her private world. And she was often down there alone, and you're kind of worried about, uh, she didn't want to have too many people know about the place. Um, house on the left, the lower areas, the old Mason house on Old Channel Trail. Lois giving the award, that's Rhonda Brewer, who lived in the old Mason house. 2017. Anyway, these plaques were made uh, out there in Fruitvale Road uh, by Montague Metal. And um, if you drive around town, you'll see them like Jim and Terry Staples next to the Playhouse Theater, the Yellow House. You'll see an oval plaque there. Okay, anyway, Lois is giving Dan. We were so fortunate to have Dan Yakes write those books, you know. Um, just, just all of them, and, uh, and the, the river one, and um, that sort of thing. Anyway, here we are. Then also, also the Ripley House was restored by Annie Rupert and her mother. Lois is now giving them in a plaque. They did a wonderful job on the Ripley House. It's, it's, it's on some websites. You can see it. But we, we had a meeting there. She, they did an outstanding job. It's the big yellow brick on Old Channel Trail. And I thought this was interesting because basically, okay, there's the big and the grand, which is the Ripley house, but then there was this kind of cutie pie little house. It's, it's on along Lake Drive, South Shore Drive, before you get to Bluff Road. And to the right of it is always a house that has green shutters on it. And it's just a sweetie pie little cottage. You know, screen porch, it's not five bedrooms, four baths, that sort of thing, uh, septic tanks and wells. It's just a very modest cottage, owned by a couple from uh, Grand, Grand Rapids. These are the owners of the little cottage. Anyway, there's Lois giving the award, 2018. Okay, and then there's future activities and grants of the White Lake Community Fund. Um, it, it, we will find out later on. Jane Hannah's here, right? Yeah, okay, because uh, she's going to say something uh, in relation to uh, the White Lake Community Fund. And um, so the legacy, because I think everyone is so, somewhat shocked when, when $1.86 million somehow came into the local fund. And so what that does is that, you know, I, I called... Uh, Beth Picard, who's been the chair of the White Lake Community Fund, but she and her husband are going to Spain and Portugal. And you thought, okay, well, I'll call Janelle Mayer, who is Cindy Francis and Dave Francis's daughter, Montague Tree Farm. She works for the Community Foundation in Muskegon, where the money's invested. She's going on a camping trip with the kids. And so you, you'd make these phone calls, and all of a sudden, nobody was around. <laughs> Pardon? I said you're stuck with me. Yeah, we got. So Jane's going to say something, right? The 1.86 million dollars is basically invested by the Community Foundation in Muskegon, and um, what that means is that then they live off the interest. Jane can explain more, but there's going to be a lot of grant money available. So if you're you have telling my story, yeah, okay. Jane's going to tell her story. 
Hi, I'm Jane Hanna. I'm representing the White Lake Community Foundation for Muskegon County. And I am the chair this year, by the way. Not oh, okay. I'm sorry. Right. But Beth knows a lot more than I do. Okay, okay. Um, just a couple things before I start talking. You're good. Turn the mic. Turn the mic. Turn the mic. Turn the mic. Yeah. You're supposed Away to be from Roger. You're supposed to be helping me here. <laughs> I'm electronically dumb. Uh, go ahead. Before I talk about the White Lake Community Foundation, I just want to do a quick little um, Lois story. Um, my husband and I moved here in the 1970s, and eventually we built in Blueberry Ridge, and, which is just down from Lois's property. And many times in the summer, this was after her sailing days, she would always rent a pontoon for the summer. And all of her colleagues from Chicago would come and visit for a very long weekend. And the ladies would start out quite early and tour White Lake with their boxes of wine. <laughs> box. box. Box wines was even then. The, um, but it never failed as she would come back by Blueberry Ridge, which they always did, where there was a shallow area. And she forever would get stuck. <laughs> and so some of our neighbors. Uh, G.W. Carroll, um, Bruce Carroll would Bruce. be down there. All of the boys, the kids would have to go down and literally push them off. <laughs> and every year she said, I'll remember this next year. Well, <laughs> she, they never did. They never did. And she was always being, put, push, being pushed off by the, but a lovely, lovely lady. Just a <laughs> wonderful, wonder, wonderful neighbor. She added a lot to Old Channel Trail. So, All right. Um, just a quick um, back a little bit about the White Lake Community Foundation. Some of you might not be aware of this. Um, back in the 50s, in 1952, a group of people in the White Lake area were um, trying to organize and raise money for a hospital in this area. And that went on for quite a few years. And when we came here in the 70s, um, a lot of things had changed, um, a lot of um, health care had changed, a lot of um, regulations had changed, and so they had to um, figure out what they were going to do with this money that they had gathered. And so that's how the White Lake Community Fund began, and it began in 1979, or 1974. Um, eventually they merged with the Community Foundation of Muskegon County, and that wasn't until 1990. Um, yeah, maybe 1996 when they all came together. Um, the first one was given, and a lot of them have been, have been given by residents, but some of them, um, in 1996, the Colville Park Fund, which is the park between Montague and Whitehall. It's more in the Whitehall side than the Montague side, I've been told. Um, and that's where the uh, sailboats and that type of things are there. And so that's one of the areas. Um, the Colville Radcliffe wants the communities of Montague and Whitehall to have their money used to support both of the communities. And so when people give money to the community foundation, they specifically say or don't say what they want it done with. For example, um, Another one that we have is the um, Leonard and Edna Bloomdahl, and they gave back in the in 2000, I believe, um, $650,000, which was good hit. A good hit for the community foundation, yes, certainly to say the least. And they they decided that they wanted to support. Um, all of the community things between the Whitehall and the Montague area, and especially for senior citizens too, and people in, in our community. Um, their assets allow grants to be made to other people, and so we started doing that. Now you can imagine, we have been struggling for years, struggling, giving away other people's money, which is wonderful. Um, but some of them, for example, are Minor Park, we have one for Minor Park that only can be used at Minor Park. Um, we have um, a couple that are, for example, um, the Porter Smith 
life rings, or it can only be used to buy life rings be out, at the, out at the pier. Um, we also have one that um, can only be used, like I said, at Colville Park, nobody else. But the Bloom Dolls and Lois both didn't put stipulations that had to be followed, so to be used for the communities to bring the two municipalities together was pretty much what they what they had said. So you can imagine when we got the, I we it rounded up to be almost um, two million dollars that she requested the one eight six, and as it settled in and we finally received it, it ended up being two million dollars. Well, that more than doubled the monies that we had at that time. So, you know, we're honored to be able to spend the money for the organizations in our area that really need it. Um, grants are, we give out grants twice a year in the spring and in the fall. And they are, we are now a part of the Community Foundation of, of Muskegon County, but we are our own entity within that. We are the White Lake Community Foundation of Muskegon County Community Foundation. And so we have our own board. There are nine of us that serve on the board. Janelle Mayer is um, our representative down there for us and we meet probably eight times a year. Um, and we um, have deadlines for um, applicants. The next deadline is September 26th, if you know of any applicants. Um, it's open to any 501 um, 3C nonprofit organizations as well as churches and schools and units of government. Um, projects have to support the residents of the White Lake area and the funds are typically provide, don't provide operating operations for a group. And so we've had a lot of um, different organizations. The We've just awarded this year so far $79,000 and part of it was to the Lighthouse to help with their memorial that they have coming up in 150 years is it that the Lighthouse okay. is I believe. <coughs> um, we helped um, do Walk the Beat, um, the White Lake Music Society we were also awarded money this earlier this year. Um, First Tee which is the organization that runs the um, golf program um, between Montague and Whitehall. Um, the White Lake Community or Environmental um, Organization, uh, the White Lake Association. Um, so lots of different organizations are given money. Also something on Sedonia Bayou. We, that was part of the, um, the White Lake um, Environmental Coordinating Council. Okay. And they were awarded $10,000 earlier this year. Um, so again, in September we'll be doing it again. We only can do this because of the people of this community who have given you know, monies to the um, White Lake Community Foundation and it has to be within the White Lake area. Um, it's an honor to be on the board. It's fun to spend other people's money. Um, and like I said, we are really thrilled, especially for many of us new Lois and so it's it's nice to see her smile and then actually all you're, over you're, the community. You're and we, we only receive, we receive certain amounts, but we can only use, it's approximately 4% 4, 4 of the total amount that's in our fund, just like any so other So you, you spend funds. the interest, not the capital. You can only spend the interest and not the yeah, capital. Yeah. yeah. So this year we had about $160,000 to spend. We spent about half of it. So in... September will spend the other half. Yes? Do you have to uh, manage the investments or is that managed by the Florida That's all done by the Community Foundation of Muskegon County. So your group only... All we do is they tell us how much money we have to spend mm -hmm. in the year and we look over all the applications. Um, many of us go and interview um, some of you know the people that are applying and ask questions and then decide you know the some when after Lois's money was announced the 1.8 million prior to that we would get groups needing five thousand dollars 
$8,000. 10 would be the most. This last year we had a couple, one that wanted 50. <laughs> 50,000 were going, ow, yeah, yeah. But we, like I said, we only get 4%. So. Are there a lot of groups in the White Lake area like this that are 501c3s? That yes. Are, are there really? Yes, there are. Um, the Arts Council of White Lake would be one of them. I know um, the major ones, but there must be a whole lot of them. Oh, there's, yeah, all the food pantries here have received, you know, money, same thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, in closing, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're in need of giving your money away, <laughs> we would love to take it. Yeah. And, and, and we are all volunteers. We're, we're on the board for about three years. Um, some take, you know, are up to six years, but um, there are people in the community that try to interview as many people as we can and, and get the feel of how much money, you know, organizations need and whether we think it's appropriate or not. And, and, the, and we have to follow the guidelines. We, you know, we just have to do that. So, Lois gave us the biggest gift we've ever had and we couldn't be more than happy. She was a lovely, lovely lady. Thank you. Any, 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 any questions for Jane? I mean, you think of organizations you might belong to which could use some of the lowest money mm -hmm. and uh, obviously um, submit the application. Janelle will help you f fill out forms and things like that. Yeah, the ones that, that we used Lois's funds th this first time was First Tee, which the, is the golf organization that works through Montague and Whitehall. Mm -hmm. um, the White Lake Environmental Coordination Council, that was the one. The so Downey Lyle. Um, the White Lake Association, which is the association that helps um, keep White Lake clean and buoys, you know, buoys. Yeah. Um, and then the West Michigan Symphony was also part of it because they come and they um, they introduce kids to instruments, and so we because it involves our schools within our within our the White Lake White Lake area, um, we awarded money for of Lois's. And then the other people, uh, like I said, the How Matt Playhouse got some um, age well. Many of the services that they, for people, the elderly people who need rides, we help with that. Um, we did that this year, Walk the Beat, I said that one earlier, and the White Lake Music Society. Um, and also the White River and Fruitland Townships where the um, life buoys are. We gave money for that, so. I was kind of wondering how many here um, went to the estate sale at Lois's place because it was a whole wonderful secret world and uh, a beautiful spot and I, I'm not sure, do you know what's happened to the house? The house is up for sale. Okay. Again. For sale again? Yes it is. Um, the, the, the young people that bought, or the people that bought that house um, have some real, I don't know how to say this, mold issues, uh, smell, it's an old house. You know, it was 1920s, 29, 30, it was built. 193. And was that what it was? And um, anyway, the the gentlemen that bought the house have, have real um, allergies. And so it, anyway, they started cleaning, they started, you know, redoing it and it, they just realized it was just above what they had wanted to do. So it's up for sale. It's a wonderful spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's kind of where like Chris Cullen's sitting over there and and the Cullen family kind of helped manage Lois's place for years and because uh, they were all friends. Mm -hmm. And um, Don was a wonderful painter and fixer-upper kind of thing and so they kind of oversaw. Well, what's of your family? Weren't they in the wallpaper business or yeah, something? Yeah, Lois is. Lois is I mean, so you can imagine the wallpaper that's in that place. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's phenomenal. I mean, yeah. Any idea where the name Lodge? Oh yeah, I, I you skipped over that. I'm done. Thank okay. you. Thank, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Yeah, Winnemac is, uh, the name is um, uh, the street that her grandparents lived on in Chicago. And so Winnemac Avenue 
became Winnemac Lodge up here. And they used it for a lot of their friends. They had a wallpaper and paint and a decorating store, Lois's parents, in Chicago. And so Lois even one time worked at the Merchandise Mart for some design place. And then ultimately, as you read in the handout, uh, you know, became a, became, became a school teacher. Um, and um, that, that's kind of it. Um, so anybody else want to say anything? Chris, you want to say something? Sure. Go ahead. You can either shout or see if they hear it. All right. I need some light to see. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Chris Cullen is uh, Nina Roberts' Baby. grandson, right? No, she was my mom. Oh, mo right. I'm sorry. <laughs> right, right, right. I keep getting generations mixed up here. But, uh, yeah, anyhow, nice to meet everyone. I know a lot of you, but nice to see everyone. Um, my mom would call me Christopher Roy Cullen, and so everyone knows that Roy came from Roy Ekstrand, so I was named after Lois's dad. And um, I never really knew him, but I've seen pictures of him holding me. So. <laughs> um, our families, how we met. Uh, my mom was basically hired to kind of watch Lois when she was a little girl. And they were both little girls. There was only five or six years difference. But uh, they, she was basically, that's how they became friends. Um, yeah, I'm not sure the, the years when they met but um, I don't think it really matters. My mom would have been 101 now, so Lois would have been about 96. She was 92 when she died, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, my mom and dad, uh, they had five kids. I was the baby. There was always one picture there with Donna and Ruth and Lois. And, uh, you know, we spent summers with them. Um, most of the time that we spent was down at the beach or at the lake house. And um, my dad, he was, like Roger said, a kind of caretaker. Uh, dad and I painted that mansion a few times. I was pretty happy when it got sighted. But, but I remember uh, one year I said, well, I'm counting the empty gallons. And there was 88 empty gallons of paint. 88. Yeah, it took a while. <laughs> but um, back to Lois, her favorite day was right around August 10th. And, I wonder why. You know, she she loved having a birthday, and. I don't know how many candles, I bet a couple thousand I've seen her blow out. Because <laughs> we were there about every year for her birthday. And um, I miss her. Yeah. Chris also is involved with the old Channel Trail golf course. Most of you probably know that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Any other comments from people out there who want to say yeah, something? I just Pardon? I, I'm listening to everyone talk about how much Lois loved birthdays, which I think is kind of funny because Lois would never tell her age. No. no. She never wanted anyone to know how old she was. And I remember one time, I thought, I'm going to find out how old she is. I went online to try to look her up, and my computer crashed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's something there. <laughs> she didn't want anyone to know how old she was. So. Okay. But but we had lots of good times as well as uh, on the pontoon, beach parties, uh, uh, dinners that we always used to have at the beginning of summer and end of summer. Right. Uh, yeah. Just we miss her a lot, and we feel very lucky to have her. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's interesting because obviously her parents loved White Lake. The grandparents loved White Lake, and then. Lois loved White Lake, and obviously, after listening to Jane, she put her money where her mouth is kind of thing, and she loved White Lake and the people here. We had wonderful times. 
Um, you know, I, I see Ann Pitkin, and um, she and Ruth obviously scoured. I mean, you see all the lineup of all the houses and the awards in the background that Lois put together. And um, Ruth, and they both had those trained architectural eyes, design eyes, and you just knew what to look for. And so, obviously, Lois loved being around, hanging around Ruth. Ruth loved hanging around Lois, trying to figure out, you know, where the next award should go. Um, any other comments? Okay. Okay, Dark, Dar come forward, and then. <laughs> okay, um, I met Lois through him and Mary McGee probably 20 some years ago. And delightful lady, and she found out I was Swedish, and then I found out that she was Swedish, and we were like instant friends. And she asked me if I had a lot of Dala horses growing up, and I said, I don't have any Dala horses. So the next time I got together with Lois, she gave me this little Dala horse. And it stands for strength, faithfulness, um, uh, wisdom, and dignity. And these little horses have been around since the 17th century. And I keep it on my refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And back. So um, I'm on a boat with Herman. I'm from the Timbers Resort. Our family owned the Timbers over 47 years. And Lois's property was right next door to us. So we became great friends after the years went by um, because we were too embarrassed to go over there and say, oh my god, we're so sorry. There's so much noise over here. Um, but everybody talks about how lovely Lois is. And I can attest to it mm -hmm. 10 times over because Every time I would run into her, I'd say, Lois, how did you ever tolerate the noise from the tumors? There were parties and card games and et cetera going on till 2, 4 in the morning. And we'd have sauna night and the pool was filled at 10 o'clock at night and all the kids were screaming and laughing. And there was quite a lot to tolerate. And she would just look at me and smile and say, oh, you guys are just having a time. <laughs> so we just we loved Lois and it's always so much fun to see her down at the boat house having a reminder of her <laughs> Thanks, Monica. The other person I contacted were the roller witches, which are her closest neighbors. Monica's at the Timbers, which is a distant away, uh, was that entrance gate I showed with the opening of the film. Um, but the roller witches lived like right, right adjacent to Lois and um, there's Janet and Jennifer. Jennifer left town for Florida. Janet uh, didn't show, but obviously they, they kept an eye. They could see when Lois's shade was up or down or something like that for her bedroom upstairs. And everyone was very protective towards Lois and her world. You know, we could turn the lights on if you like. Um, and then anybody else want to say anything? Um, I want to ask a question. Okay. Lois well, some of that's written up in, in the handout where, where she taught in, in Chicago land. She was raised up near the Evanston border and um, um, went to Northwestern and um, Lived happily ever after, I guess. Yeah. A lot of good friends. Okay, Ellie? Yeah, I was on the Architectural Award Committee with Lois, and she and I would, she would pick me up and we would walk riding and we'd look at all the different houses. And she would tell me, oh, here's one we have to go look at, or here's another one, or whatnot. But she used to just scare the crap out of me because <laughs> she would go barreling up a driveway and just right to the front door or whatever and then she would say okay you go knock on that door <laughs> and there were times when she would say well here take my camera and go take pictures and I finally said well it's, someone's going to come out with a shotgun and she said well Ellie nobody's going to hurt two ladies with white hair <laughs> We never got hurt.
that was the other thing, like Tanya Kabbalah said, what, what can I do for the 150th anniversary of Whitehall's um, anniversary? And so I said, I'll, I'll do Whitehall's changing architectural styles. And so what happens is that you walk around with a camera and you stop in front of a house and you take a picture or you, and you park and you know, everybody wonders like, what are you? are you? Are you the bank? Are you foreclosing? Are you a real estate agent? And so you have to be careful about how you stop in front of houses and what you say to people. But she had no fear. I mean, she, she didn't care about she that. Did. She just no. Also, you know, she used Winamac like her parents did for entertaining. And like if it was the 4th of July, that's... Um, a certain hostage mother, I, the name escapes me right now, but would come by and be a house guest. And they, they were typical house guests continuously. Like the McKee girls, which she sailed the e-boat with, um, were from Florida land. And they would be up here every, every, every summer kind of thing for a period. And there's like just, I mean, I, I think the whole place was like booked all summer long of just friends coming up and, and spending time there. So any other comments? Okay, well anyway, I guess what we do now is, Cheryl, I don't know if you want to take over, but um, there's uh, the birthday cake that Lois would have in the back there. Mary. Say one thing. Uh, I didn't collect pictures because, dear Dar, please check out the wonderful pictures of our beach parties, of oh, our that's theme parties. She was loved by all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, she she loved <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we all remember when we first met Lois. As I mentioned, I mentioned, you know, like working down at Skipper's Landing. And that somehow when you met Lois, you feel like, oh, there's a neat person. I'm going to become friends. Mm -hmm. And you became friends and, and um, you just kind of joined. and, and um, she was always very up and, and um, always good stories. Way back. You just uh, uh, poked my memory a bit. I met Lois when you did the Historical Society visit at the Timbers. That was my first meeting of her. Okay. And she, that, that night she told some stories about the Timbers. I don't know if they could be repeated. <laughs> She took great delight in the sort of salacious details. Yeah, the, the Timbers, Monica's family owned the, the, the place for a while. But uh, wonder, wonderful piece of property. And um, um, it's also like they hadn't invented at, you know, hillside ele elevator kind of things going down a slope. And so... Um, Dunham's, which had it, decided he had a stroke and he had a yacht down below for going to Chicago. And so somehow to get down to the lake, what are we going to do? And so when you're out cruising around, you see Lowe's yellow boathouse with the two brown doors. And then just towards Lake Michigan, there's this big iron shaft, which is the elevator shaft that would take Mr. Dunham down to the yacht so we could sail back home to Chicago. Mm -hmm. It was a whole different world kind of thing. And there was some interesting marriages and divorces and stuff going on. <laughs> okay, here she is. We already have your jokes. You got them when you came in. So please share each with each other some of the jokes as you sit at the table. And as soon as Jan, our wonderful hostess in our society, always does a wonderful job with the refreshments, she's going to cut the cake. But if you have not had a chance to look at it yet, please, before she cuts it to pieces, <laughs> take a quick, because it's beautiful. So thank you, Jan, for all the effort that you put into tonight. We have cake, we have punch, we have coffee. This is all in celebration of Lois's 90th or 92nd or 94th birthday. Thank you all for coming and enjoy the fellowship. Good job, Good job. Good job. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Because you're all taking good care of your properties on White Lake so that you make it as, you know, comfortable and, and 
pleasant to live here as we've all found it over the years. Um, I don't know, and this is not really a good thing for a chairman to do, is to say I don't know who, who the first recipients are. Um, I've talked with them on the phone, but I don't know them in person. Are Judy and Kurt uh, Overway here? Oh, come on up. <laughs> Good to meet you. <laughs> Good to meet you, sir. <laughs> Their house is on Old Channel Trail, and uh, it's, it's a very distinctive house. Uh, and I'd like them to tell you a little bit about how they found it, what they've done with it, how they've enjoyed it, and all that sort of thing. So, with you? <laughs> <laughs> My husband Kurt. Um, it was uh, a little strange the way we found our house. We moved up here from Hudsonville. We were there for 21 years, and after our um, kids graduated from high school, we thought we wanted to get out of off a busy road. And um, I worked in Muskegon. I was teaching at Baker at the time, and our my director lives right behind us. She actually has the same address as us. And she said after two years search of finding a house that. Um, we really liked. Uh, she said, why don't you look at the house in front of ours? And I said, I don't even know where you live. Where's Montague? And, <laughs> and so we went and looked at it, and my husband especially uh, fell in love with it. And um, it actually came with a black and white picture that I think has been handed down um, to every um, owner, and it sits on our mantle. I'm not sure how old it is, but it does have the original shutters on it. And we love the house. We've been there since 2011. We've tried to keep it as original as possible. And um, um, we're finding out things all the time about quirks and especially how to keep it cool when we have boiler heat. Um, so we don't have air conditioning, but it's a trick. So um, we just uh, really enjoy it. And um, it is uh, it's, it's a unique area. And we love Montague in the Whitehall area. And it's um, a very unique home. I appreciate it. Thank you. This is the plaque that we give, and we hope that as you drive around Montague and Whitehall, you will look for these plaques because people can be very proud of having won um, an award like this. And so, Judy and, and Kirk, we hope that you'll put it on the house. Could you tell us where on Old Channel Trail, where is the house? Wilcox? Or, uh, yeah, Kirk and Wilcox and Old Channel Trail. Right. It was Tech oh, Rocco's house. Ted Rocco's old house. Ted Tarako's old house. Yes. Uh -huh. And yes, we still get their mail. <laughs> posters, uh, last year's award winners and this year's. So take a look at them and see what kind of thing we look for in houses. Uh, I see that Greg and Deb uh, are back there. Come on up, would you please? colors on it at one time, and if you look at it now, you'll see that it is just a beautiful, beautiful home that's been restored, and I don't know the age of it, but I'm sure you could tell us. Yeah, they've done a great job. So this is the Lewis House, which is a bed and breakfast, uh, just next to the Playhouse, 
so you know. Okay. Well, no. well, first of all, let's give you an award so you have something to hold. <laughs> Thank you. We have to take a picture now. Thank you. Okay. okay. Here. It's all something. yours. It's okay. all yours. All right. Thanks, Lois. Uh, thank you all uh, for the uh, very nice award. Uh, we will put it uh, right next to the uh, other plaque in the house, which is the plaque that states that the house is on the National Register of Historic Places for its significance in its architectural and um, and also uh, John Lewis's, um, uh, you know, importance in this area. We uh, uh, bought the house not because it was a cool house. It, it is a cool house. Uh, we bought the house because we love this area of Michigan and the White Lake area. We were attracted to it when we first came here, when we drove uh, down scenic uh, into Montague, uh, and then uh, stayed over across the street at the White Swan, and uh, got to know the area, and then we ended up, uh, you know, eventually um, uh, getting into the Lewis House, and uh, we spent about six years um, renovating it, and uh, it's been a blast. Uh, we're still having fun, and uh, I think, uh, you know. Um, it's just been a, it's been a really good trip. So thank you very much. The uh, last award. Uh, by the way, did you notice that two of them are in Montague this year and none last year? So I'm so pleased that Montague is finally taking the the reins in doing something. <laughs> anyway, the, the next house is one that you probably have seen along Old Channel Trail, and it's owned by somebody that I know you've seen, and it's Roger Sharmer. Come on up, Roger. <laughs> something like this, but somehow, uh, you know, uh, I realized that the house, and people ask you, what are you doing, you know, and you say, I live in a 137-year-old house, you know, without central air, without whatever, whatever, that sort of thing. But anyway, uh, you know, it, we, I did the math, I'm very slow on math, but I subtracted 1941 from 16, uh, to, uh, you know, today, and, and uh, we've been, basically, we've had the house for 75 years. And it's been an old family house for 75 years, and uh, great old spot. And uh, anyway, if you're curious, come on by, take a walk around, whatever. Uh, I planted a bunch of, I've always lived in the woods, out in Mill Valley and stuff like that, and so I planted a bunch of bushes and shrubs around it, so you can't quite see it, but uh, you can wander back in and you won't be attacked. No dogs. Thank you. Thank you. We'd like to uh, offer you the incentive to fix up your houses, if they aren't already, <laughs> and tell us about them, because we, we have a lot of fun in the spring thinking about, well, maybe that one over there. How about this one, you know? And give us some incentive to uh, maybe look at your house and, and perhaps choose it for a future award. Thank you. <laughs>